Fairbanks Morse & Company was an American manufacturing company in the late 19th and early 20th century. Originally a weighing scale manufacturer, it later diversified into pumps, engines, windmills, coffee grinders, farm tractors, feed mills, locomotives and industrial supplies until it was merged in 1958. It used the trade name Fairbanks Morse. There are three separate corporate entities that could be considered successors to the company, none of which represent a complete and direct descendant of the original company. All claim the heritage of the Fairbanks Morse & Company. Fairbanks Scales is a privately owned company in Kansas City, Missouri, that manufactures the scales. Fairbanks Morse Engine, a subsidiary of Enpro Industries, is a company based in Beloit, Wisconsin, that manufactures and services engines. Fairbanks Morse Pumps is a part of Pentair Water in Kansas City, Kansas, and manufactures pumps. Founding and Early History Fairbanks Morse and Company began in 1823 when inventor Thor Deus Fairbanks opened an iron works in St. Johnsbury, Vermont, to manufacture two of his patented inventions, a cast iron plow and a heating stove. In 1829 he started a hemp dressing business for which he built the machinery. Though unsuccessful in fabricating for fiber factories, another invention by Thord Deus, the platform scale, formed the basis for a great enterprise. That device was patented in June 1832, and a generation later, the E. and T. Fairbanks and Company was selling thousands of scales, first in the United States, later in Europe, South America and even Imperial China. Scales were integral to business as marine and railway shippers charged by weight. Fairbanks Scales won 63 medals over the years in international competition. It became the leading manufacturer in the U.S., and the best-known company the world over until Henry Ford and the Ford Corporation assumed this title in the 1920s. In Wisconsin, L. Wheeler designed a durable windmill for pumping water, the Eclipse Windmill. Wheeler set up shop in Beloit just after the Civil War. Soon half a million windmills dotted the landscape throughout the West and as far away as Australia. At about the same time, a Fairbanks and Company employee, Charles Hosmer Morse, opened a Fairbanks office in Chicago, from which he expanded the company's territory of operation and widened its product line. As part of this expansion, Morse brought Wheeler and his Eclipse windmill pumps into business with the Fairbanks Company. Morse later became a partner in the Fairbanks Company and by the end of the 19th century, it was known as Fairbanks Morse & Company and was headquartered in Chicago. Canadian and American cities had branch dealerships, with Fairbanks first coming to Montreal, Canada, in 1876 and later opening a factory there. Market Expansion into Engines in the late 19th century, business expanded in the western United States, as did the company's catalogue. It grew to include typewriters, hand trucks, railway velocipedes, pumps, tractors and a variety of warehouse and bulk shipping tools. The company became an industrial supplier distributing complete turnkey systems, tools, plumbing, gauges, gaskets, parts, valves and pipe. Its 1910 catalogue contained over 800 pages. The Fairbanks Morse Company began producing oil and NAPTHA engines in the 1890s. The firm's gas engine was a success with farmers. Irrigation, electricity generation, and oil field work also benefited from these engines. Small lighting plants built by the company were also popular. Fairbanks Morse power plants evolved by burning kerosene in 1893 coal gas in 1905, then to semi-diesel engines in 1913 and to full diesel engines in 1924. In 1914 the company began production of the Model Z single-cylinder engine in one, three and six horsepower sizes. The Z was soon made in sizes up to 20 horsepower. Over a half million units were produced in the following 30 years. The Model Z found favor with farmers, and the Model N was popular in stationary industrial applications. The company also had brief forays into building automobiles, tractors, corn shellers, hammer mills, cranes, televisions, radios and refrigerators, but output was small in these fields. After the expiration of Rudolf Diesel's American license in 1912, 
Fairbanks Morse entered the large engine business. The company's larger Model Y semi-diesel became a standard workhorse, and sugar, rice, timber, and mine mills used the engine. The Model Y was available in sizes from 1 through 6 cylinders, or 10 to 200 horsepower. The YVA engine was the first high-compression, cold-start, full diesel developed by Fairbanks Morse without the acquisition of any foreign patent. This machine was developed in Beloit and introduced in 1924. The company expanded its line to the Marine CO engine as well as the Mill Model E, a modernized Y diesel. During World War I, a large order of 60-30 horsepower CO Marine engines were installed in British decoy fishing ships to lure German submarines within range of their 6 inches naval guns. From this, Fairbanks Morse became a major engine manufacturer and developed plants for railway and marine applications. The development of the diesel locomotive, tug, and ship in the 1930s fostered the expansion of the company. Seagoing Diesel Engines Prior to World War II Fairbanks Morse developed a marine engine using an unusual opposed piston design, similar in arrangement to a series of German Junkers aircraft diesels. The most common variant for submarines through the 1990s was the 38D8-1 over 8 engine, ranging from 4 to 12 cylinders. This engine was delivered to the U.S. Navy in large numbers, often for use in fleet submarines, which used 9 or 10 cylinder versions as main engines in World War II. When the innovative but faulty pancake engines of the Tang class proved unworkable, they were replaced with World War II style Fairbanks Morse engines, and these remained standard on U.S. diesel powered submarines through the early 1960s. These and other Fairbanks Morse OP engines were also used as backup power on U.S. nuclear submarines through the Sea Wolf class of the 1990s. Fairbanks Morse ranked 60th among United States corporations in the value of World War II military production contracts. The U.S. Navy has had Fairbanks Morse diesels in operation on its submarines almost continuously since 1938. They remain in service on Los Angeles, Sea Wolf and Ohio-class nuclear submarines of the U.S. Navy. In addition to OP engines, Fairbanks Morse license builds Peelstick, Alco, and MAN design engines. Railroad Locomotives Shortly after it won its first U.S. Navy contract, the company produced a 300-horsepower 5x6 engine that saw limited use in rail car applications on the b and Milwaukee Road, and a few other lines. Two of the 5X6s were placed in an experimental center cab switcher locomotive being developed by the Reading Railroad. A 5X6 powered the plant switcher at FM's plant. In 1939 the SLCC placed FM 800 horsepower 8X10 engines in six streamlined rail cars, known as the FM OP 800. In 1944 FM began production of its own 1000 horsepower yard switcher, the H10-44. Milwaukee Road No. 760, the first Fairbanks Morse locomotive constructed in their own plant, is now preserved in operating condition at the Illinois Railway Museum. Fairbanks Morse & Company, like other locomotive producers, was subject to wartime restrictions regarding the number and type of railroad-related products it could manufacture. After World War II, North American railways began phasing out their aging steam locomotives and sought to replace them with diesel locomotives. Fairbanks Morse and its competitors sought to capitalize on this. The Virginian Railway was an early advocate of Fairbanks Morse power, buying this company's products rather than those of other manufacturers such as Emdor Baldwin. In December 1945, Fairbanks Morse & Company produced its first streamlined cab-equipped dual-service diesel locomotive as direct competition to such models as the ALCOPA and MD unit. Assembly of the 2,000-horsepower unit, which was mounted on an A1AA1A wheel set, was subcontracted to General Electric because of a lack of space at Fairbanks Morse & Company's Wisconsin plant. GE built the locomotives at its Erie, Pennsylvania facility thereby giving rise to the name Erie Built. Fairbanks Morse & Company retained the services of industrial designer Raymond Louis to create a visually impressive car body for the Erie Built. The line was only moderately successful. 
a total of 82 cab and 28 cabless booster units were sold through 1949, when production ended. The Erie-built successor was manufactured in Beloit and designed from the ground up. The result was the Consolidated Line, or C-Liner, which debuted in January 1950. Orders for C-Liners were initially received from the New York Central, followed by the Long Island Railroad, the Pennsylvania Railroad, the Milwaukee Road and the New Haven. FM design locomotives were also produced under license in Canada by the Canadian Locomotive Company. Orders to the CLC were also forthcoming in Canada from the Canadian Pacific and Canadian National Railways. Accounts of mechanical unreliability and poor technical support began to emerge. It became apparent that the 2,400 horsepower Westinghouse generators were prone to failure, and the FM prime movers suffered from short piston life and proved difficult to maintain. Moreover, railroads were quickly moving away from the cab unit type and standardizing on road switcher designs, as offered by the competition in the form of the MGP7 or the ALC ORS3. By 1952, Orders had dried up in the United States and the production run was only 99 units, although they were more popular in Canada, particularly with the CP, and orders continued there until 1955. Several variants were only produced by the Canadian Locomotive Company, and Canadian Roads received 66 units. Westinghouse had announced in 1953 that it was leaving the locomotive equipment market, partly due to the FM generator problems. This made continuing production of the sea liners impractical without a redesign, and since marketplace acceptance was marginal, production was ended. Fairbanks Morse continued to produce their road switcher designs, including the Train Master series, but these met limited success in the marketplace. Financial problems resulting from an inter family feud among the owners weakened the company, and this, combined with stiff competition from end products such as the F units, a declining market as the replacement of steam locomotives was at an end, and an expensive excursion into the development of a high-speed passenger train, led FM to exit the railway locomotive market. Fairbanks sold its last locomotive in the U.S. in 1958, and shipped its final unit to Mexico in 1963. The CLC was renamed Fairbanks Morse Canada in 1965, and closed in 1969 after a strike. Post-war power products, Fairbanks Morse continued to build diesel and gas engines, as it had been doing for the first half of the 20th century. This is in addition to the pump and engine division, which produced Canadian Fairbanks Morse branded products for farms, factories and mines. Export offices were established in Rio de Janeiro and Buenos Aires. A factory was opened in Mexico, where Model Z engines were built well into the 1970s. An Australian branch factory, similar to the Canadian branch operation, was opened and remote sheep stations benefited from their products. It dated from 1902, when Cooper Sheep Shearing Machinery Limited was set up in Sydney, and became an agent for Fairbanks Morse in that hemisphere. The company sold and updated the Eclipse model of windmill pumps in North America until they became obsolete with widespread rural electrification in the 1940s. Low-cost electricity from the grid eliminated the need for local power production by small and medium diesel plants. While many Fairbanks Morse engines dutifully served into the late 20th century, modernization, regional plant closures, and electricity were too much competition. An inter-family feud for control of the company in 1956 between the sons of Charles Morse weakened the company. Consequently, Fairbanks Morse was merged with Penn Weston in 1958. The downhill slide continued for the next few decades, with assets being sold off, and branches of the company closed. Regional sales offices were closed, and the one-shop model no longer appealed to buyers in the new consumer age. Automakers, tractor makers and locomotive builders made inroads into Fairbanks Morse's market share. Thus the company spiraled down, and was sold. Corporate disposition, Fairbanks Morse and Company merged with Penn Texas Corporation in 1958 to form Fairbanks Whitney Corporation. Fairbanks Whitney was reorganized as Colt Industries in 1964, taking the name from Colt Manufacturing, 
the maker of firearms and an asset of Penn, Texas. In 1988, the Fairbanks Morse Pump division was sold off to private investors to become Fairbanks Morse Pump. It was subsequently purchased by Pentair as part of an acquisition of General Signal Pump Group in 1997. In 1988, the scale business was sold off by Colt Industries and became Fairbanks Scales, still an independent company. In 1990, Colt Industries sold its firearms business to Compare Holdings Corporation as Colt's manufacturing company, incorporated and became Colt Industries. Colt merged with Goodrich Corporation in 1999 and retained the Goodrich name. In 2002, as part of a series of divestitures of non-aerospace divisions, Goodrich spun off its engineered industrial products division as Enpro Industries, incorporated and became Goodrich Corporation. Enpro is now the parent company of Fairbanks Morse Engine. As a result, there are now three companies using either the Fairbanks or Fairbanks Morse trademarks, with lineage to the original Fairbanks Morse and Company. Fairbanks Scale and Fairbanks Morse Pump claim lineage back to ENT Fairbanks Company. See also, List of Fairbanks Morse Locomotives, Fairbanks Morse 38 8-1 over 8 diesel engine. References Further reading, Fairbanks Morse 38 D8 diesel locomotive. PSRM Diesel Locomotives. Retrieved October 25, 2014. Pink Pank, Jerry A. The Second Diesel Spotter's Guide. Kamch Publishing Company, Milwaukee, W.I. ISBN 0-89024-026-4. Wendell, C. H. Fairbanks Morse, 100 Years of Engine Technology. Stumpers Publishing Company, Lancaster, P.A. Wendell, C. H. Power in the Past, Volume 2. A History of Fairbanks Morse and Company Stumgas Publishing Company, Lancaster, Pennsylvania. External links, Fairbanks Morse Engine Website, Fairbanks Morse Nuclear Website, Fairbanks Morse, 100 Years of Engine Technology Obsolete.